This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is all about biogeochemical cycles and we're looking at the phosphorus cycle and how phosphorus is moved and transferred through the Earth's system through different components and different quantities, looking at the major sinks and reservoirs and pools of phosphorus where it's stored and how this phosphorus is moved through various fluxes between various parts of the Earth's system. So this is all about the phosphorus cycle. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The element phosphorus has an atomic number of 15. It has 15 electrons, 15 protons, and a mass of about 30.9. And this element is 11th most abundant in the crust as a mineral and it is an integral element for all biomass vegetation flora for growth and the backbone of both dna and rna so plants and vegetation require this element but it is also a limiting factor because it exists in small quantities if the quantity is too high or too low it can affect the growth and quality of vegetation and the soil and phosphorus comes in different variations chemically in the cycle it exists as the phosphate ion po43 negative the hydrogen phosphate hpo42 negative dihydrogen phosphate which is h2po4 and phosphoric or phosphorus acid which is h3 or h4 po4 again these are all variations of phosphorus when you are adding hydrogen and oxygen to the basic element and this occurs when the phosphorus is reacting with water the phosphorus cycle is linked closely to the other biogeochemical cycles especially the nitrogen cycle which includes also sulfur the water and the carbon cycles now they all have their major storage areas in the Earth's system called sinks or pools or reservoirs. Now, in terms of the phosphorus cycle, it is the lithosphere or the marine sediments with more detail. It has the oceans, the soil and biomass. It does not have the atmosphere. Now, there is a small, very small quantity and flux of phosphorus that is moved through the gaseous layer of the Earth, the atmosphere, through perhaps sea spray or dust or maybe some pollen but the idea of a sink or pool is a large quantity of stored elements or nutrients and the phosphorus cycle just doesn't have that quantity to have the atmosphere as one of those sinks or pools and it's the only one of the biogeochemical cycles that doesn't involve in a large capacity the atmosphere. We begin our cycle for phosphorus in the oceanic sediments, the deposits of large amounts of phosphorus, the largest sink in the cycle, and how this phosphorus actually gets to the ocean sediments. So obviously you have an ocean above it, which is going to provide and deposit and accumulate through a burial flux the amount of phosphorus required to then go through diagenesis to form these deposits in marine sediments and eventually into sedimentary rock layers through diagenesis and lithification and then eventually through uplift into the soils and the surface where it can be re-weathered and eroded and water playing a major role the water cycle in the movement of phosphorus through the erosional agent of water which is very powerful through the stream flow through groundwater through lakes rivers and ponds and eventually back into the ocean as that influx of phosphorus mostly as the phosphate ion now in the ocean itself you have these phytoplankton these microscopic animals in the base of the food chain in the marine food webs and this is in a eutrophic zone where it is close to the surface in the photic zone and you have this primary production going on with photosynthesis with the phytoplankton and they're going to consume this inorganic phosphorus in terms of phosphate ions and it's going to serve as a biological pump in the oceans where the phytoplankton is going to consume and uptake the phosphate ions it's going to be organic phosphorus in these marine organisms 
when they decay and decompose and they fall to the bottom out of the eutrophic zone onto the benthic zone of the ocean and accumulate on the ocean floor, there you have that large amount of phosphorus in the organic material that's decomposing. Also, the waste out of the phytoplankton is going to add additional phosphate into the system. And this is going to accumulate as, as oceanic sediment deposits. A vital part of the phosphorus cycle is the uptake and assimilation of phosphorus or phosphate ions into vegetation, into the flora, into the plants, the grasses, to provide the terrestrial ecosystems with that producer and that nutrients that's integral or integral for the plant growth, the plant biomass for DNA, RNA, and for general health of vegetation. So this is done again through bacteria and microorganisms in the soil, in the topsoil and the B horizon, and also maybe the C horizon with extensive leaching. Now the water cycle plays an important role in percolation and leaching of cations and anions and colloids and humus and organic material which contains the phosphorus and also inorganic phosphorus which comes in H2PO4 and HPO4 to negative which is dihydrogen phosphate and hydrogen phosphate and collectively they are called orthophosphates in terms of their ability for the plants to uptake this type of phosphate compound so these are both inorganic so a lot of the chemical cycles and the plants are going to uptake organic nutrients or an organic versions of the chemical or the chemistry. And in terms of phosphorus, this is going to bind with soil and be uptaken by the plants. The phosphorus cycle is similar to other biogenical cycles like the nitrogen cycle and the water cycle, carbon cycle, and also sulfur cycle that have or can be impacted by humans and human activity. Now, in terms of the phosphorus cycle, phosphorus being a limiting factor and very important in the growth and maintenance of crops and plants and farmland and the whole business and industry of agriculture and producing food to feed the world's population, Phosphorus plays an important role in farming and farming practices and the application of extra phosphorus onto farmland in or through the application of fertilizers, as with nitrogen, can play an important role in the cycle, in the balance of this very small but very important chemical or nutrient, which is phosphorus. Now, the addition of phosphorus is down to soil erosion and providing more security on the crops and the crop yield from season to season. However, runoff and erosion can play an important role on the excess phosphorus into other water sources like lakes and oceans and cause eutrophication. So looking at the phosphorus cycle as an entire complete cycle involving the biomass, the soil, the ocean and marine sediments, the rock layers with sedimentary rock, and also the oceans. Each sink is accounted for, and the major fluxes of movement of the phosphorus are stated, and also in terms of the type of phosphate or phosphorus in regards to the chemical compound, the addition of oxygen and hydrogen, the removal of oxygen and hydrogen to change the variety within the cycle, both inorganic and organic forms of phosphorus, forms of phosphorus, which includes the process of mineralization and immobilization between bacteria. And the bacteria are basically PSB, which is phosphate solubilizing bacteria or phosphate solubilizing microorganisms. And you can also include in this the uplift of the rock layers, which is most, mostly going to be the phosphate mineral group, which contains about 300 minerals. And the main mineral with phosphorus, about 95%, is apatite. And the role of the water cycle is inherently important with the movement and flux of phosphorus and the absence of the major atmospheric quantity or sink within this cycle, but most of it is done through the 
overland flow, the stream flow, the groundwater flow between the ocean, the rock and the soil and the ability for water to transport phosphorus around the soil through leaching and percolation. And the author also include the large quantities of phosphorus being added by fertilizers on agricultural and arable land across the world because farmers are using this to kind of guarantee the growth and yield of their crops rather than leaving it up to nature. And as it's a small quantity and a small limiting factor nutrient, phosphorus is important. They add it in in the fertilizer to guarantee more growth. But then you do have the consequence of excess phosphorus flowing through with the water, with the erosional agent, into bodies of water, causing various environmental issues like eutrophication and algae bloom because the algae is going to eat the excess phosphorus and exponentially grow in numbers, which is called a bloom, which can then take away the oxygen in the marine environments, whether it be a lake or ocean, and cause issues for the food web and food chain because of the lack of oxygen and the anoxic environments. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.